Sup, Chooms! Sorry the upload's a bit a bit slow as of late. You see, I've been playing this game, System Shock, on the PlayStation 5, which my wife's boyfriend bought me. It is a remake of one of my favorite games of all time. You see, the game takes place in the future, in a cyberpunk dystopian's future in the year 2072, and it takes place aboard a space station that is orbiting Saturn that is governed by an artificial intelligence named Shodan. But once she found out that she was programmed without hair, she goes absolutely insane, declares herself a god, God, and then subsequently kills everybody on the station as she attempts to exterminate humanity once and for all. It's a really cool game, guys. But as much as I like it, I won't forget about my responsibilities as a hair loss witcher. So, for the past month or so, the hair loss community has been riding the Deutasteride Master Race hype train in a big, big way. Indeed, the Deutasteride Master Race is finally getting the attention it so richly deserves, and I feel that attention is fully justified. Deutasteride is, after all, the most efficacious hair loss treatment that is currently available to consumers, especially when it is taken at 2.5 milligrams per day. However, I still cannot help but think that even as we've been basking in the Deutasteride Master Race's glory, we've forgotten our humble origins as hair loss witchers. You see, back in the 1980s, before the era of the Finasteride peasantry and the Deutasteride Master Race, the only real weapon we had to fight the Slaphead Curse was Minoxidil. And it wasn't even 5% Minoxidil, it was just 2% topical Minoxidil, which was expensive and can only be obtained via prescription since Minoxidil didn't become an over-the-counter drug in the United States until 1990. These days, almost nobody talks about minoxidil anymore. It did see a rise in hype a couple of years ago when dermatologists started prescribing low-dose oral minoxidil off-label, but that hype died down a bit once it was revealed that oral minoxidil is not more effective than topical minoxidil. This was demonstrated in a randomized controlled study of 90 men that was published just this year. The study showed that contrary to what many people believed, including myself at one point, that oral minoxidil at 5 mg per day was not superior to 5% top of minoxidil that is applied twice a day for treating antrenic alopecia. So, it is possible that higher doses of oral minoxidil would be more efficacious. However, no doctors want to prescribe oral minoxidil at higher doses due to its dangerous cardiovascular side effects, which unfortunately can even happen at low doses. Of course, that's a different subject altogether, and I've done a whole series of videos on the risk of low-dose oral minoxidil, and I'll go ahead and link that playlist below. But now, with Deutasteride having exploded in popularity, the discussion amongst hair loss switchers is about either switching from finasteride to deutasteride or using higher doses of deutasteride to suppress more DHT. This is of course completely fine, but I think many more people who are unsatisfied with the results or are feeling a bit of hair greed should consider adding topical minoxidil into their routine before upgrading their 5-air inhibitor. I say this because I see a lot of people write me comments where they say things like, hey Kevin, I'm getting good results from finasteride or deutasteride, but I want even more than that. Should I switch from finasteride to deutasteride or increase my dose of deutasteride, and I'm all like, well, if you want more, why don't you add topical minoxidil? So, I'm sure some people will try to counter this by saying, but Kevin, minoxidil doesn't even suppress DHT, so using it is like applying a band-aid to the problem, bro. Minoxidil isn't worth it because it's only a short-term solution. Didn't you know that, Kevin? Indeed, many people have this impression that minoxidil will only work for a couple of years before it peaks and we then get no further benefit from using the drug. There are also a lot of people who are scared to use minoxidil because they think that their hair follicles will become addicted to it and they'll have to keep on using it indefinitely. This has always been completely ridiculous to me because if you have antrenic alopecia, your hair follicles are going to be addicted to drugs no matter what you do. And I say that because any treatment that works for antrenic alopecia has to be used in definitely, whether it is finasteride, deutasteride, or minoxidil. And that's because antrenic alopecia is a chronic condition that is linked to our genes. Your hair follicles don't become addicted to minoxidil any more than they become addicted to finasteride or deutasteride. If you stop any of these drugs while you're on treatment after you've been on them for a while, you will definitely lose ground. On the other hand, if you start with minoxidil alone and then you switch to finasteride or deutasteride, you will actually likely gain ground since 5 air inhibiting drugs like finasteride and deutasteride are more potent treatments than minoxidil. That's because they treat the underlying cause of hair loss, specifically DHT. However, there are some subtle differences in what happens when you stop minoxidil versus what happens if you stop finasteride. That's because 5 air blockers like finasteride and deutasteride essentially pause the balding process since they lower the levels of the trash hormone DHT in the hair follicles, which is of course what is causing baldness to begin with. Minoxidil, on the other hand, is just a non-specific growth stimulant that does not halt the balding process. To demonstrate this, let's take a look at this figure 
here. The graph shows the changes in hair counts over time with finasteride alone versus a placebo. First, just look at the first 12 months in the graph. The open and closed triangles both represent men taking oral finasteride at 1 mg per day. The open and closed circles represent men taking a placebo treatment. You can see that in the men taking the finasteride, hair counts increase in the first 12 months, while in men taking placebo, there is a gradual reduction in hair counts. That is consistent with the natural evolution of androgenic alopecia when it is untreated. It of course only gets worse. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at months 12 to 24 on the graph and pay close attention to the open triangles. There are men who stop taking finasteride at month 12. Compare that curve to the curve with the closed circles. This is the placebo group that continue to lose hair over time. The men who stop finasteride, which is the open triangle curve, clearly lost their gains, but they still ended up better than the men who had taken a placebo from the start, which is the closed circle group. I interpret that in this way. Finasteride put the balding process on hold. If you stop finasteride, you lose your gains, but you don't lose as much as you would if you had never taken finasteride in the first place. That's because finasteride treats the underlying cause of androgenic alopecia, which of course is the trash hormone DHT. With topical minoxidil, however, the results are a bit different. Let's take a look at this graph here. This graph looks at hair weight, which is a surrogate for hair growth. The open circles are 2% topical minoxidil, and the closed circles are 5% topical minoxidil. The open and closed squares are a placebo group and an untreated group. As you can see, just like with finasteride, topical minoxidil improves hair growth versus the control groups, and 5% minoxidil is superior to 2% minoxidil. However, over time, the improvement in hair growth diminishes, and the decrease in the curve parallels the curve that shows the worsening of hair growth in the control groups. That's because minoxidil is a hair growth stimulant, but it doesn't treat the underlying cause of androgenic alopecia, which again is DHT, so the improvement diminishes over time. At the 96th month, minoxidil was stopped completely. You can see that over the next 24 months, the results become identical to what would have happened if you had never taken minoxidil at all. Once again, that's because minoxidil adds hairs, but it doesn't actually stop the underlying process of androgenic alopecia, which is caused by DHT. So by combining finasteride with topical minoxidil, you get the optimal cosmetic result. You stop the underlying progression of androgenic alopecia with finasteride, and you add further hair growth with minoxidil than you would see with finasteride alone. That way, you won't have the diminishing effects that eventually happen when you use minoxidil by itself, and minoxidil will therefore be effective forever. And we know there is good scientific evidence that the combination of oral finasteride with topical minoxidil gives much better results than using either drug alone. This meta-analysis published in 2020 looked at the results of combination therapy versus monotherapy with finasteride or minoxidil. It concluded that combined therapy with both drugs gave the best therapeutic efficacy compared with either drug when used by itself, while at the same time, the incidence of side effects was no higher with combined therapy versus either drug alone. So that's great news, Jims. But of course, to maintain this optimal therapy, it is necessary to continue it indefinitely. Fortunately, topical minoxidil, unlike oral minoxidil, is very safe and very well tolerated in most people, and it is inexpensive as well since cheap generics are sold everywhere. So. For for most people, stopping it is rarely necessary. Also, it isn't as inconvenient to use as many people think. The recommendation is to use it twice per day, and you can do that if you want to, but the data that is based on is slightly out of date. The truth is, you only need to use minoxidil once per day, and I made a video explaining the science behind that, which I'll link below. What I do personally is that I'll take minoxidil once per day, and I'll apply it at night, you know, maybe just a couple hours before going to bed, and then when I wake up in the morning, I'll go ahead and shower it off. That way, I get the full benefits of minoxidil without having to worry about it giving me that greasy look throughout the day. And you know, I always find it funny when people complain about how inconvenient minoxidil is. It's so freaking easy. It only takes a few minutes to apply, and any slight inconvenience it causes me is well worth the benefits it gives to my hair. If you're not willing to suffer such a tiny inconvenience for the sake of your hair and add to your daily routine something that takes about the same amount of time as brushing your teeth, well then maybe saving your hair really isn't all that important to you after all. Now of course the subject of minoxidil is not new here at Hair Cafe, not in the slightest. I've done many videos on minoxidil, including videos on its efficacy, on using different preparations and concentrations of it, on combining it with tretinoin, and on its safety as well, including whether minoxidil can kill your cat. I've debunked the whole minoxidil skin aging myth that gets brought up all the time whenever I make a minoxidil video, and all those videos can be found on my minoxidil playlist, so be sure to check that out if you are interested. But since this is a video about why minoxidil stops hair loss forever, let's go ahead and take a look at the scientific research on the 
the long-term efficacy of topical minoxidil. When I'm talking about long-term efficacy, I mean studies that have lasted over a year. We have five-year follow-up studies on finasteride and dutasteride, and we even have 10-year follow-up studies on finasteride. Minoxidil is the oldest of the hair loss drugs, so what kind of long-term follow-up data do we have on minoxidil? Well, we just looked at a randomized control study that gave minoxidil for 96 weeks, which is almost two years. If we look again at the graph we already showed, it proves that both 5% and 2% minoxidil maintain a constant advantage over the control groups during the 96 weeks of the study. The study concluded that although the benefits of minoxidil alone decrease over time, 2% minoxidil maintained a consistent benefit of a 25% increase in hair growth over the untreated group, and 5% maintained a 35% benefit in hair growth during the 96 weeks of the study. However, we do have a study of topical minoxidil that looks at an even longer follow-up period of five years. It's this one here. The study started out with 126 men who were using 2% or 3% topical minoxidil for at least one year. After this first year, 31 of these men continued to be followed for a total of five years. After the first year, 3% minoxidil was used because it was superior to 2% minoxidil in its results. During part of the study, the minoxidil was applied just once per day in some of the subjects, but for the last couple of years of the study, all the subjects got 3% minoxidil twice per day. So the dosing in the study was more complicated than it had to be, and unfortunately, it is an old study from 1990, so 5% topical minoxidil wasn't even used because it didn't exist yet. However, the results were consistent with the other study I just presented that lasted for 96 weeks. As this graph shows, the minoxidil effect on hair counts peaked within the first year and then gradually diminished over time. However, the results still remained much better than the before minoxidil results even after five years. The authors concluded, quote, we found that hair regrowth with topical minoxidil tends to plateau at about 12 months of treatment with a slight decline in this new growth by two and a half to two and three quarters years. With follow-up now to four and a half to five years, we have found that continued use of topical minoxidil is associated with a slow decline in the 12-month hair counts, but continued maintenance of non-vellus hair regrowth well beyond that of baseline, unquote. That's consistent with the process of androgenic alopecia gradually continuing over the years. Unfortunately, this study did not have a control group, but the results do suggest that minoxidil alone continues to provide a significant benefit over at least five years. So minoxidil has long-lasting benefits, there's no doubt about that, and we've seen that it augments the effects of finasteride on hair growth too. So any limitation with minoxidil's long-term efficacy is easily corrected so long as minoxidil is used with finasteride. So, so long as a 5-year inhibitor is being used, minoxidil will never stop working and it will never stop promoting hair growth. Now, you might be asking whether adding minoxidil to dutasteride will also enhance dutasteride's effects like it does with finasteride. Well, surprisingly, there is very little scientific data on using topical minoxidil along with dutasteride, and I think that's mostly because dutasteride and finasteride are already very similar drugs. So, if minoxidil enhances the effects of finasteride, which it clearly does, then there's no reason it wouldn't do the same thing with dutasteride. If anything, minoxidil is likely even more efficacious when used with dutasteride, since there will be even less scalp DHT to contend with. So, if you're feeling hair greed and you think greed is good, then there is no reason members of the dutasteride master race who take 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride per day shouldn't enhance their already superb results with topical minoxidil. And that includes the members of the dutasteride exalted race who are taking the most effective hair loss treatment ever created, 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride per day. Or if you are satisfied with your status as a finasteride peasant but still want more hair without having to actually join the dutasteride master race, then minoxidil is the obvious choice. Topical minoxidil and oral finasteride is considered the gold standard in the hair loss community for a very good reason, and that is because it works extremely well and all the scientific evidence shows this. Finally, even though I've gone over this a million times already, I know that I have to address this because this comes up pretty much every time I make a video about minoxidil. The reason why minoxidil works is not because it increases blood flow to the scalp. The exact way minoxidil works is still unknown, but we know it works differently from finasteride, which is why the two drugs have a synergistic benefit when they're used together. The most likely mechanism probably has to do with minoxidil opening up a specific potassium channel in the hair follicles that stimulates hair growth. If the mechanism of hair growth with minoxidil were blood flow though, then other drugs that increase blood flow, like calcium channel blockers, alpha blockers, or ACE inhibitors, would also cause hair growth. But none of them do, and in fact some of them even can cause hair loss as a side effect. But to summarize all of this, 5% topical minoxidil is the best hair growth stimulant that currently exists. If you use it by itself as a monotherapy for androgenic alopecia, you will get an improvement
movement and hair growth that will peak after about a year of continued use. If you continue to use it alone, you will gradually lose ground because the underlying process of androgenic alopecia is still going on and minoxidil can't stop that. If you stop minoxidil completely, you will eventually get back to a point where your hair would have been if you had never started it to begin with. So that doesn't mean minoxidil monotherapy is useless. On the contrary, it can actually be a very good choice for teenagers under the age of 18 who are balding, but their doctors are not willing to write them a prescription just yet because of their age. By using minoxidil, that will buy your hair enough time until your doctor will write you a prescription. However, the best hair loss stack is a combination of either finasteride or dutasteride with topical minoxidil. That will allow you to maximize and maintain your gains indefinitely. So yes, minoxidil does work forever, but only if you're using it with a 5-year inhibiting drug, which let's face it, every hair loss sufferer should be using anyways. So there are other hair growth stimulants in the pipeline, many of which I've made videos on, but for now, if you want the best hair growth stimulant that is currently available, then go ahead and add 5% topical minoxidil to your daily routine. You only have to use it once per day, and it will be a highly effective adjunctive therapy to whatever 5-year inhibiting drug you're currently using. So regardless of whether you're a finasteride peasant or part of the dutasteride master race, minoxidil will definitely give you significantly better results than using a 5-year inhibitor alone. Many people are satisfied with the results from using just a 5-year inhibitor by itself, and that is perfectly fine. Finasteride can definitely be an effective monotherapy for most people, but if you want more than that, then minoxidil should definitely be your next decision. Alright, thank you all for watching Hair Loss Witchers. I'll see you all next time. God bless.